Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jason with devslopes.com and in this video, we are going to learn how to structure our projects so that it is more modularized and scalable. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm sure as you've been building a brand new project, you have a new index file and a new SAS and a new CSS file. Everything is simple and organized, right? Well, say you're working on this project and uh, your client or your boss comes to you and says, hey, I need you to add X, Y, and Z. And then all of a sudden, this project starts growing bigger and bigger and bigger. You're adding more plugins and more libraries. And soon, the project becomes very unorganized and it's kind of a mess. So what can we do to help solve this? So to demonstrate this, let's go ahead and create a folder on our desktop. So I'm gonna right click and hit new folder. And then I'm gonna name this thing, uh, I gotta click it. I'm gonna name this structure example. All right, cool. And then let's go ahead and open that up in Atom. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit open. And then right here on my desktop, we've got structure example. Perfect. All right, so we've got a folder here. We've got a project folder. So what we can do to help modularize our projects here is divide, we can divide things up into folders. So for an example, let's right click on our project uh, folder here. We're gonna create a new folder and we're gonna call this base. All right, and then right click on your project folder again. We're gonna create a folder and we're gonna call this layouts. And we're gonna create one more folder and we're gonna call this modules. Now you're probably wondering what the heck this is and why are we naming our files this way? Well, we're using a method uh, called SMACS, which stands for Scalable and Module Architecture for CSS. And SMACS, we can uh, find it over here. They've got a website and a book here. And his name is Jonathan Snook. And what he's done is he's helped set a standardization for writing and organizing HTML and CSS. So if we uh, come to the website uh, smacks.com, and we can come right into here, uh, categorizing CSS rules. All right, and remember, this is more of a style guide. This isn't, oh, I have to structure my projects this way. This is going to give you a good guide and a reference so that you can take these principles and create something that works for you, all right? Now, so we've got uh, five different categories uh, that Jonathan uh, Snook covers here. And these five types of categories are base, layout, module, state, and theme. Now, you can see that we've created the first three uh, folders in this. We're not gonna worry about state or theme. If you wanna learn more about this, go to smacks.com and I strongly encourage you to read the documentation that is here. This is really gonna help set you up for success. All right, so let's dive into base rules and find out what this is. All right, so it says a base rule is applied to an element using an element selector, a descendant selector, or a child selector, along with any pseudo classes. So inside the base rules, this is where we set the style rules, uh, the basic style rules for our web page. All right, so let's go check out the layout rules. All right, so the layout rules are used to help divide up sections of your website, okay? So these are working with things like the header, uh, articles, footers, and what we're doing with the layout declarations is we're using the pound sign. So if we come over to streetleague.com, um, we can divide this up into layout sections. So for an example, up here at the top, we have a nav bar right here, all right? And then right underneath it, it's almost like we have a sub nav bar. All right, and then below this, we have a, a section that announces information or upcoming events. And then below that, we have a second section. It includes a grid of user profiles uh, laid out in a grid. And you can see here that we're also using um, header tags right here, which is also considered a layout style, all right? I hope this gives you a good visualization of what this layout folders really is and what it does. All right, so now let's dive into our modules. Now, modules are incredibly important. All right, so it says here that a module is a more discrete component of the page. It is your navigation bars, your carousels, your dialogues, your widgets, and so on. Now, when we're making these module rules, only classes 
uh, should be put in here. This module folder should only be classes, no IDs, no raw elements. So let's come back to our text editor and create some files. So um, what I want to do here is in each folder, I'm going to create a couple of files. So let's start building out some files. So I've got my base file right here. And in it, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this base -dir sass Okay, I'm going to create these files first. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to explain exactly what I'm doing here. So we're going to create another file in here. And this is just going to be base.sass. And then in our layouts, let's go ahead and add layouts uh, dash dir dot sass. And then we're going to get another file in here and we'll just call this a header dot sass. And then we'll make a footer dot sass. All right, so now we've got uh, some files in here. And then in our module, go ahead and create a new file. And we're going to call this uh, modules dash dir dot sass. And then we're going to create two more files. We're going to do a button.sass. And then we're going to go ahead and create a, let's just do a navbar. If I can spell navbar.sass. All right, cool. So let's now dive in and see exactly what we've done here. All right, so these, each one of these dir uh, files that I've created, I want them to act as a directory. And let me show you why. I'm going to create another file outside of everything. I need to make sure I'm on my structure. And this is going to be our main uh, SAS file, so app.sass. And what I want this our main SAS file to do is act as an index for all the styles that we've put in these three folders. And let me show you how we're going to do that. We're going to use the import all right, uh, key. And then we're going to import the uh, base file, this directory here. And to get to that, you can see it's nested inside a folder. So we're going to do base forward slash base dash dir. And then, you know, it has the extension of SAS, but we don't need to add this extension. All right, SAS is smart and it knows it's a SAS smile. A SAS smile. <laughs> Let's do another import and we're going to do the same thing for the rest of these. So we're going to dive into the layout folder. It's layouts folder. And then it's the. Uh, layout dash dir okay and one more and we've got the uh, modules folder we're going to dive into that and grab the modules dash dir cool so we've got our three imports and i'm going to go ahead and save that now and then check this out so we're grabbing the directory file in each one of these and now let me show you what we're going to do with this directory file so Let's go ahead and set a base uh, for pretends here. Now, we don't have an HTML file. I'm not referencing it. We're just we're creating our own styles. That's all we're learning in this section is just the structure of styles. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just grab a body tag here. And we're going to give it a, a width of 100%. Oops, I don't know what that was. And we'll do some uh, padding. Let's do like uh, 40 on the top and bottom, and then we'll do like 50 on the left and right. Okay, we're, we're just throwing in a standard uh, style here, and then we'll save that. And then what we do is we take this SAS file, and now we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to import it into our directory. And so this one is simply called base. And remember, you don't need to use SAS because SAS is smart. And so we're just grabbing the file, and we're already in the folder, so we don't need to navigate to any new directories. All right, so let's move down to the layouts here. And for our headers, let's just say um, every header is going to have a padding of 20 pixels. And then what else are we going to do with uh, headers? Let's just say that it has a width of 100%. And then we could also add nothing else because that's all I can think of. All right, and then we'll move into this uh, footer file. And remember, when we're working with layouts, we use the ID selector, right? Um, because layouts are very powerful pieces of the layout of our page, and we need to make sure that it has a high specificity so that we can apply these styles across the board. So now we're going to grab, just create a footer ID. And let's just say in all of our footers that we want the color of the text to be white. 
and we want the uh, background color uh, to always be this uh, lighter black and that's it that's great now let's go to the layouts directory file and in here we're going to import the footer and we're going to import the header okay do you see what we're doing here we're creating a category folder and then inside of this we can create these very specific uh, uh, SAS files like little snippets of CSS to help separate and organize our styles and then over here in the button uh, we're just gonna create a class remember and let's just do like this one's a BTN large or something a large button and we'll do a padding of 30 pixels uh, top and bottom and then we're gonna do 40 pixels right and left and we'll add a background cr color of green this thing just auto corrects weird things sometimes. And then we're going to add a font color of, let's just do white. Cool. And then we'll just create another one here, uh, BTN small. And then inside of here, we're going to add the uh, padding to be only 10 pixels, top and bottom. And then we're going to do 15 pixels, right and left. And then we'll do a background color of something weird teal and then give it a font color of black okay cool so now we've got some uh, some styles in here so we're gonna go to the nav bar and I'm just gonna call this uh, main nav make another class here and then we're just gonna add a background color of gray and then a uh, border We'll do a border of one uh, pixel solid black. Okay, so there you have it. And then all we have to do is import these uh, files into our directory. So we're going to simply import the button and we're going to import the nav bar. All right, so excellent. So now we've got all these files in here. We've got uh, files laid out. So they're very clean, very organized. In each file, we have very specific small little component snippets of SAS, of CSS styles that we want to apply. And if we ever need to revisit this project and say, oh my gosh, I need to add another button style, I can simply come into my button uh, style sheet, my SAS file here, and start creating new button styles. And then if we get like a profile image, I could add that SAS file and then create default uh, profile image uh, styles. So you can see how powerful this gets. And then all of this on one command is going to import here and then compile into a CSS file. So let's go ahead and do that. So open up your terminal or your command line. I'm gonna make this uh, larger and go ahead and navigate into your project folder. So mine's on the desktop. And I forgot what I called this. Might start with a structure. Nope. What did we name this? Let me list this out. We, we call this structure. What the heck? All right, there it is. Cool. So we're inside of our folder now. And we can go ahead and add that watcher. So we've got our app.sass. And we're going to compile this into a app.css. Go ahead and hit enter. And check this out. We have an import that isn't working. This is, I, I love the terminal because it will give you errors like this. So let's go ahead and look at our app SAS file on line two. So if we look at this, it says, ah, the layouts file, number two. Layouts has an S and I did not put an S on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save again. And you can see it's compiled successfully now. And watch this. We go into our CSS folder and it has all the styles from every single folder category that we've created. That is cool. So for the rest of this section, this is how we are going to be structuring our projects to make sure that they are scalable and very clean and very organized. That's a wrap. Let's move on.